how do we find derivative of inverse trigonometric functions? That is what we are going to look at in this particular video. It has been requested by many students and I hope this video will address them all. Feel free to contact me. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Now, let us enjoy the journey of success and understand how do we prove trigonometric inverse derivatives. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. Here is a very important video in which we are going to discuss derivative of inverse functions. We'll actually find the derivative of inverse of trigonometric functions in this particular video. It is a very important part of calculus which is normally a part of calculus 2 or higher level calculus. We'll prove all the given derivatives. Derivative of sine inverse x is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x square. Derivative of cos inverse x is minus 1 over square root of 1 minus x square. Derivative of tan inverse x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x square. Derivative of cosecant square x is minus 1 over x square root x square minus 1. Derivative of secant inverse x equals to 1 over x square root x square minus 1 and derivative of cotangent inverse x is minus 1 over 1 plus x square. So when we say inverse functions we really mean that if I write y equals to sine inverse of x it means sine y is equal to x right. Now, inverse x is also written as arc sine. So, arc sine x is same as sine inverse x as you must have seen in many books. Now, these are very important formulae. It can be taken as your formula sheet to find derivative of inverse trigonometric functions. In this video, we will see how do we very easily prove each one of them and also understand how does it relate to inverse functions derivatives. Perfect. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. So that is my email address at which you can always send your queries. Now before getting into the derivatives of these inverse functions, we should understand that trigonometric functions are periodic and therefore for their inverse to be a function we have to restrict their domain right as you understand horizontal line test is critical so we have to keep that in mind to find the derivative of these functions it is important to use the derivatives of the functions itself so you know Let's recall, derivative of sine x is cos x, cos x is minus sine x, tan x is secant square x. And the derivative of cosecant x is minus cosecant x, cotangent x, secant x is secant x, tan x, and cotangent x is minus cosecant square x. So these are the derivatives which you should know before getting into derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. Now let's talk about inverse trigonometric functions a bit as I was saying sine graph is shown here in dotted lines it is as you can see a graph which is periodic so if I draw a horizontal line it fails the test more than one point it crosses so that means we need to restrict our domain and for sine x we are restricting the domain from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 as shown here. So whenever 
we work on the derivatives of inverse functions, we are looking at a particular interval where the inverse will also be a function. So keep that in mind. For sine x, the domain is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and the range is minus 1 to 1. Correct? So keep these things in mind. That is kind of important. We are not going to write this along with the equations. Our focus will be to find the derivative of the trigonometric inverse functions. So now here is a recap on what the derivative of inverse function in general can be and how do we find it. So let us explore derivative of functions and its inverse. Now as you know inverse function has a reciprocal slope at corresponding points. To illustrate that, well, let's have an example here. Consider the differentiable 1 to 1 function f of x. In that case, we will just now prove that the derivative of inverse of a function is actually reciprocal of the derivative of its function, right, at the inverse point. So here is a straightforward proof. If y is equal to f inverse of x, it really means that f of y is equal to x, correct? That is the definition, right? We are considering one-to-one -one function, so inverse is a function. For trigonometric functions, we will restrict the domain to ensure that they are functions. So now if I take derivative on both the sides as shown here, then what do we get? Well, implicit differentiation, correct? So at this stage, you see we did implicit differentiation. And so we can write that the derivative of fy will be derivative of fy times dy dx, correct? And on the right hand side, we have dx dx, which is 1. Derivative of x is 1. And clearly, from here, what do we get? We get the most important relation, which is derivative of y, which is inverse of the function, is 1 over derivative of fy. Correct? So that is what we are trying to say. So this is the relation, which is what we have said here, that inverse function has reciprocal slope at corresponding points. You get the idea. So that helps even to find the derivative of trigonometric functions straight away without even going through the steps which we are going to show you. So if you understand the concept well, it is a one-step solution to prove the derivatives which we had shown you in the very beginning. All these, you get the idea. Okay. Anyway, let us continue. So basically, you are saying y is basically f inverse of x, right? Therefore, the derivative of f inverse of x is reciprocal of derivative of f at a point, which is f inverse of x. You get the idea. So, so that is how they are related. Now, when we derive or prove the given formula for inverse trigonometric functions, you will see how it really relates to what I was talking about. Let's begin with proving that d dx of sine inverse x is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus x square. You can also pause the video and do this proof. Now, a couple of things important is to first understand we're talking about inverse, so we have a restricted domain, and in this case, we have restricted the domain from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. All measurements are in radians. So, y equals to sine inverse x means what? It means sine y is x, correct? Now, let us differentiate both sides with respect to x. So, differentiating sine y with x, what do we get? So, what are we doing here? We are differentiating both sides, which is sine y and x with respect to x, correct? So, derivative of sine y is cos y dy dx. 
and derivative of x is 1. So we get cos y dy dx equals to 1. And so what is dy dx? It is 1 over cos y, correct? Let's focus on this relation for a moment. It is important to understand that what I am writing here is dy dx is equal to 1 over d dx of sin y. Do you see that? Cos y actually is the derivative of sin y. And that is what we said, that the relation between the derivative of the function and its inverse is kind of a reciprocal ratio as you are looking at. You get the idea. So derivative of sine y is indeed cos y and so directly we could get 1 over cos y just as shown here. You get the idea. So that could be the starting point of your proof. Now it is a question of relating cos y with the x values. We would like to have the solution of this with in terms of x. So for that always look into a triangle. So we have a right angle triangle shown to you and when we say that sine y is x, what does that mean? Sine y is x means if y is the angle, in that case sine y is x means opposite side to hypotenuse ratio is x, x over 1. What is going to be the third side? Definitely hypotenuse square minus the opposite side square which is 1 minus x squared, square root, right? So, that is how they are related. Now, in this particular triangle, can you tell me what is cos y? So, now, tell me what is cos y in this particular triangle? Cos y is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, it is 1 minus x square within square root over 1. So, that value, we have substituted here for cos y. You get the idea. And we got our result. Perfect. That is how we prove them. I hope you understand and appreciate it. You can always send me an email to get more information on calculus. Perfect. So I hope you find it easy. Why don't you try to find now the derivative of cos inverse x? We'll follow exactly the same procedure. So now, Let's take the second one, which is derivative of cos inverse x. It should be equal to minus of 1 over square root 1 minus x square. Well, y is equal to cos inverse x. Cos y is x. Let's take derivative. What is the derivative of cos y? Minus sine y. So, minus sine y dy dx is 1. And dy dx is therefore 1 over minus sine y. You get the idea. So once again, we have shown you that the derivative of cos inverse x is basically equal to 1 over derivative of sine cos y, correct? Cos inverse x is y. You get the idea? d dy. Correct? Of cos y. That is what we get. Perfect. So that is how we have to answer these questions, right? Cos inverse x is basically y, right? So dy dx, right? I could write here dy dx. Which is 1 over derivative of the function itself, right? So, so that is how they are always related. So, once again, we just begin with the function, write it in terms of cos y equals to x, find derivative on both the sides and we get our relation. At this stage, we'll go back to the right angle triangle to find what is sine y. Well, to begin with, cos y equals to x, that means if this angle is y, adjacent side is x, hypotenuse is 1, the opposite side has to be 
1 square minus x square square root. And from here, we get the sine y relation. Sine y is square root of 1 minus x square, and we get our proof. You get the idea. So these simple steps help you to get the derivative for trigonometric inverse functions. Remember, we are working on restricted domain. Similarly, we'll continue with tan y. You can always pause this video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. We are now looking into derivative of tan inverse x. Let y be equal to tan inverse x, tan y will be x. Differentiating, we get secant square y dy dx equals to 1, and the derivative is equal to 1 over derivative of tan y, which is secant square y. Do you see that? And getting back to the triangle, if we know that tan y is x, it means the ratio of opposite to adjacent is x over 1. That gives us hypotenuse of x square plus 1 square square root, or 1 square plus x square square root. So now, from here, we can find what secant square y is, it is the hypotenuse over 1, which is the adjacent side. And you get square of hypotenuse as 1 plus x square. And you get your proof. You get the idea. So these are the steps which you do over and over to find the derivative of trigonometric inverse functions. Is that clear to you? With that in mind, I would like you to continue and prove that the derivative of cosecant inverse x is minus 1 over x times square root of x square minus 1. Similarly, the derivative of secant x is as given in this formula, and cotangent x is also right there. You get the idea. So basically, we always reach a step where we are writing that the derivative dy dx is equal to 1 over derivative of the function itself, right? So, as you can see from the formulas which we have seen, derivative of cosecant x is minus cosecant x cotangent x, cosecant x is secant x tan x, cotangent x is minus cosecant square x. So, these three expressions come in the denominator. When we talk about cosecant x, you see that with a negative sign as it was secant x and cotangent x. Perfect. Once you get to the stage, then you have to look into the right angle triangle and then write down the values in terms of x. That is how you prove these inverse trigonometric identities. So I hope the concept is absolutely clear. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. I hope you understand and it all makes sense to you. So derivative of inverse trigonometric functions can be found directly also by using the concept that derivative of inverse function is reciprocal of the derivative of the function itself. With that, we end the video. Thanks for your time. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thank you and all the best.